Hello and welcome back. This is part two of my tutorial on the handle variations by Brahms. Let us now listen to the first part. After that, I will talk about genesis and background of the work and analyze the theme. Actually, Brahms was not the first one to write variations on that theme. It was George Friedrich Handel himself, and his five variations are part of a Chamberlain suite written in 733. Here are some excerpts. Do you like them? Great, I don't. You want to know why? They're not really creative. 16th note in the right hand, 16th in the left, triplets in the right, triplets in the left. And the great finale, again 16th note in the right. Wow. Sorry, if you want to listen to great Handel music, have a look for the Messiah or some of his operas. Brahms wrote his set of variations, Opus 24, in the year 1861 and dedicated the work to Clara Schumann, widow of Robert Schumann. The official title is Variations and Fugue on a Theme by Handel. Ending the set of 25 variations with a fugue is quite interesting, as a fugue is a musical form that had its heyday in the Baroque, the same period the theme itself was written in. Besides, Brahms was a master of polyphonic techniques and influenced a lot by the Baroque era, so you could consider his Opus 24 to be an almost ideal combination. But now let's start to have a closer look on the theme. Handel called it aria, which means song. There are three features I want to point out. Most important for any cycle of variations is the harmonical structure, as this is the basic the grounding for the melody. It is interesting that 90% of the time the harmonics alternate between B flat major, which is the tonic, and F major, the dominant. There are just some short moments where Handel puts in a subdominant E flat major or subdominant parallel C minor. Second, if you take away all the embellishments, the melody line is quite simple too. Notice that it contains almost no leap at all, but rather a straight line consisting of only neighbored notes. There are two characteristic elements, the trill and the following group of 16th notes, which can be seen as an embellishment called turn in slow motion. Finally, let us analyze the rhythmical structure in the left hand. You might have observed that it is the same rhythm all the time. Three quarter notes followed by a pause of the value of an eighth note and the following eighth note is the pickup for the next phrase again. This is the end of part two. In the next part, I will present to you the first variation. Thanks and bye-bye.